Hello guys, welcome to Macintosh Weekly. And today in this video, I'm gonna show how to revive or restore a Mac firmware using Apple Configurator. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And now let's begin. Rarely, a Mac with Apple Silicon or the Apple T2 security chip may stop responding and need to be revived or restored by another Mac. Here the question arises, when to revive or restore a Mac? If a Mac with Apple Silicon or the Apple T2 security chip may have become unresponsive, then the firmware stored in its memory needs to be revived or restored. This can occur in certain rare circumstances, such as when a power failure interrupts macOS installation. Symptoms can include, starts a Mac up to an exclamation mark in a circle, shows the status indicator light pattern for firmware recovery mode, or starts up to a blank screen. To resolve this without erasing any of your files, revive the firmware of your Mac. If reviving is unsuccessful, you can restore instead. Now, here comes what you'll need to revive or restore. Of course, the affected Mac, which is the Mac with Apple Silicon or Mac with the Apple T2 security chip that you're reviving or restoring. Other Mac models don't apply. Another Mac, which you will use to revive or restore the affected Mac. This Mac must be using macOS Monterey or later. A USB-C to USB-C cable that supports data and charging, such as the Apple USB-C charge cable, included with some Apple products. It works with ports on Mac that accept a type USB-C connector, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt or USB 4, Thunderbolt 3 or USB 3. Don't use a Thunderbolt 3 cable. However, if you don't have a USB type C to C cable, you can still go with a USB type A to type C cable, which supports data and charging. Now moving further, let me tell you how to set up your computers to revive or restore your affected Mac. By following these steps based on whether the affected Mac is a laptop computer or desktop computer, and whether it's a Mac with Apple Silicon or a Mac with the Apple T2 security chip, you will use the USB-C cable to connect the two computers, then enter DFU, Device Firmware Update Mode, on the affected Mac. In case you haven't got a USB-C cable, use Type A in the working Mac computer and the Type CN to the affected Mac computer. For a laptop computer, on the affected MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, plug the Mac into a power source. Mac with Apple Silicon, facing the ports on the left-hand side of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the leftmost USB-C port. Mac with T2 chip, facing the ports on the left-hand side of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the rightmost USB-C port. The left side of every laptop has a USB-C port furthest to the left. For desktop computer, on the affected desktop computer, iMac, facing the back of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the rightmost USB-C port. Mac Mini with Apple Silicon, facing the back of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the leftmost USB-C port. Mac Mini with T2 chip, facing the back of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the rightmost USB-C port. Mac Studio, facing the back of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the rightmost USB-C port. Mac Pro with desktop enclosure, on the top of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the USB-C port furthest from the power button. Mac Pro with rack enclosure, on the front of the Mac, plug the USB-C cable into the USB-C port closest to the power button, now on the other Mac. With the computer booted to macOS Monterey or later, plug the other end of the USB-C cable into any USB-C port. If using USB Type-A to Type-C, plug the Type-A end into any Type-A port. Also, make sure the Mac is connected to the internet. Now, on the affected Mac laptop computer, to enter DFU mode, press and hold the power button for up to 10 seconds until the Mac turns off. If your Mac has a Touch ID button, it's also the power button. Press and release the power button, then immediately press and hold all four of these together on the built-in keyboard. Control on the left-hand side of the keyboard, Option on the left-hand side of the keyboard, Shift on the right-hand side of the keyboard. Power button, Mac with Apple Silicon. Keep holding all four keys for about 10 seconds, then release all keys except the power button. After about three seconds, release the power button. Mac with T2 chip, keep holding all four keys for about three seconds, then release all keys. Now on the affected Mac desktop computer, to enter DFU mode, unplug the Mac from its power source. Press and hold the power button. Keep holding the power button while plugging the Mac back into the power source. After about three seconds, release the power button. Now, let's move to the final process, how to revive or restore an affected Mac computer. 
After setting up your computers, use either the Finder or Apple Configurator to revive or restore the affected Mac, depending on which Mac OS the other Mac is using. This shows a Mac ready to revive or restore from the Finder. This shows a Mac ready to revive or restore from Apple Configurator. In this guide, I'll stick to the Apple Configurator method, as the Finder method is already covered. If you want to revive or restore your Mac using Finder, follow the guide from iButton. Now, before getting into the process, ensure your device is in DFU mode. You can also verify it from the system information. Now, I'll show you how to revive. It can be faster than restoring, and it doesn't erase your Mac. If using Apple Configurator, which requires macOS Monterey 12.4 or later, open Apple Configurator, which you can download from the App Store. In the Apple Configurator window, select DFU for the affected Mac, as pictured above. From the menu bar, choose Actions, then Advanced, and then Revive Device. A progress bar in this window will show that the revival is underway. When the revive is complete, the affected Mac restarts automatically. If it shuts down instead, press the power button to turn it on. If asked, select a volume to recover, such as Macintosh HD, then click Next. If asked, select a user you know the password for, and enter that user's login password. Click Next, then click Restart. Mac with Apple Silicon, the revived Mac loads startup options, which include options with a gear icon. Select your startup disk such as Macintosh HD, then click the Continue button that appears below it. The revived Mac will finish starting up, then the process will be complete. So this was the revive process for any of the Mac computers, whether it's Apple Silicon or a Mac with T2 security chip. If your Mac can't be revived, only one option is left, which is restoring. And now, let's get into the restore process. To restore, first put your affected Mac into DFU mode and ensure it's in DFU mode.
Now in the Apple Configurator window, select DFU for the affected Mac, as pictured above. From the menu bar, choose Actions, then Restore, then click Restore to confirm. A progress bar in this window will show that the restoration is underway. When the restore is complete, the affected Mac restarts automatically. If it shuts down instead, press the power button to turn it on. If asked, select a Wi-Fi network or attach a network cable. If you have a Mac with Apple Silicon, if asked, enter the Apple ID and password you've previously used on this Mac. When the setup assistant opens, use it to finish setting up your Mac. If you have Mac with T2 chip, the restored Mac will show a spinning globe as it starts up from macOS recovery over the internet. Connect your device to the internet using Ethernet or Wi-Fi. If asked, enter the Apple ID and password you've previously used on this Mac. Then click Exit to Recovery. When you see the list of utilities in Recovery, choose the option to install or reinstall Mac OS. After the Mac OS installation has finished, the Mac will restart and open the Setup Assistant. Use it to finish setting up your Mac. So, that was it. This was the way to revive or restore a Mac with Apple Silicon, or T2 security chip. So that was it, hope it was useful, consider like for the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, just comment down below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day ahead.